Will Evergrande's collapse crush the Australian economy? Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee, let's have a look at this article written by Frank Chung for news.com.au. Another lost decade, what Evergrande's collapse means for Australia. The collapse of a Chinese giant Evergrande could start a chain reaction that leads to a disastrous lost decade. For Australia. But don't worry, we've got houses. That's our innovation, according to the IMF. So, the collapse of Chinese property giant Evergrande may kick off another lost decade for Australia, marked by stagnant wage growth, a falling Aussie dollar, budget deficits, and tax increases. But rather than a Lehman Brothers style financial contagion, Evergrande's default instead marks a major structural adjustment to the Chinese economy, experts say. It is likely to lead to a restructuring that will see foreign investors hit hard, but domestic lenders, customers and suppliers protected to a degree. In Australia, the biggest loser will be our iron ore exports, which brought in $149 million last financial year. The good news is, you're not going to have an acute crisis, but the long-term trade-off is very bad, because you're going to have a chronic wind-down in all the commodity dem- demand that matters to Australia, said David Linwell Smith, chief strategist at MB Fund and founding publisher of Macro Business. Iron ore and coking coal are the two obvious ones, but other metals as well that are very in demand in that sector, such as copper, some nickel, things like that. China has built an enormous steel sector in part to service this construction economy that was a one off. AMP Capital chief economist Dr. Shane Oliver agrees that the property fueled Chinese growth phase had run its course, but he was not as pessimistic about the implications for Australia. Well, remember, we had China banning so many of our exports, one after another, and there was concerns that it would have impacts that would ripple through all of Australia. And, well, they adapted. They found other trading partners around the world. So you've got to remember, we, let, let's look at what happened in the past, the last time there were concerns about this. If Chinese property grinds to a halt, that's a huge negative for Australia, but that seems unlikely to me, he said. Rather than a dead stop, he predicts a long-term fall in demand for Australian commodities to fuel the construction industry will be partially taken up by the need for some of the same materials in green energy technology. The world is moving to decarbonise, which means masses of demand for other commodities Australia has produces such as copper and other metals, he said. See, this is the funny thing, decarbonize. All of these things have embodied energy. That's, it all has embodied energy. I don't think the average punter knows the concept of embodied energy. When you build a windmill, it has embodied energy. Okay, And uh, you won't get any bonus benefit of it until you've generated enough power to equal that energy embodied in the manufacturing, transport, and maintenance of that infrastructure. It takes time to pay off. And if you're, if your decarbonized energy production facilities isn't running at the modelled rate, well, then you've got a bit of a problem. So Evergrande is officially in default. Evergrande, the world's most indebted property developer, with liabilities of more than three hundred billion, was officially declared in default by rating agency Fitch overnight after missing a key overseas bond interest payment this week. At least 10 smaller but still sizable Chinese property developers have defaulted on bond payments since the summer. It comes amid a broader squeeze by Beijing on the country's out-of-control property market. President Xi Jinping last year introduced a new set of rules known as the Three Red Lines, defining strict borrowing limits in a bid to rein in the sector's ballooning debt. I mean, there you go. While Chinese authorities have taken steps to soften the blow domestically, the People's Bank of China has sought to curb the currency by raising the required ratio on bank foreign exchange holdings, but has declined to raise interest rates. The three red line policy, which has largely driven the deleveraging, remains intact. So, we know that because Chinese policymakers are doing only just enough to keep it going without it turning into a major economic accident, The fact that they've let Evergrande go under is the ultimate evidence that they want it to go under. 
They want all of their Evergrande to go under because they want to stop overbuilding in the economy. He added that Beijing knew that letting the property sector run was simply setting themselves up for a much bigger accident in the not too distant future. A 2020 study authored by Harvard economist Kenneth Rogoff and Beijing Ting Hu University economist uh, Yan Chen Yang found that real estate related activities accounted for 28.7% of Chinese GDP in 2016. Dr. Oliver pointed out that Evergrande had only defaulted on its offshore debt, which was only about 10% of its total, and domestically the company only accounted for about 0.1% of total bank lending. Chinese authorities probably won't allow it to default on its debt to domestic Chinese borrowers, and I think they'll try to protect customers and suppliers, he said. I don't think the Chinese authorities are prepared to let this cause a collapse in the Chinese economy. It looks to me like foreign investors will take a bit of a bath, which is bad for them, but not debilitating for the global economy. So the future of Australia-Chinese trade relations. Australia has been hit with brutal trade sanctions by China over the past 18 months on some $20 billion worth of, worth of exports, ranging from wine and lobsters to barley and cotton. And they've adapted. Those markets have adapted. That's what we've found. But overall, dollar value in trade remains largely unaffected as China continues to buy record amounts of iron ore and liquefied natural gas at record prices. A major restructuring of China's economy will put an end to that grace period. Letting Evergrande go under in this managed process is an exemplar of their determination to slow their economy permanently in areas that most that are most important to Australia, Mr. Lemon Smith said. It appears the base case is we'll avoid a Lehman-style crisis, but instead China will become like Greece for Europe after the GFC. It'll be restructured permanently. It's therefore a structural challenge to the Australian economy. Challenges ahead for our economy, because we're our economy is significantly dependent on China. Foreign investors use the Australian dollar as a proxy for the Chinese economy. Just think about that, guys. The loss of billions of dollars in commodity income will wipe out Australia's current trade surplus and current account surpluses. That's bad news long term for the Aussie dollar. It will be a huge hit to nominal growth. Mr. Lemon Smith said. It will weigh very heavily on incomes. It will be very difficult to get wage rises. The budgets will get hammered. You face the possibility of tax heights to try to substand, uh, substitute for falling corporate revenue. It doesn't have to be a catastrophe, but it means another lost decade. Most likely, it will be another decade of bleeding out of living standards, which is what we faced after the last commodity crash. The Australian property market will be largely unaffected, however. Interest rates, which have been at record lows for years and have been tipped to rise sometime in 2022, are likely to remain steady in this scenario. Peter Wargent, co-founder of Buyers Agent Network Buyers Buyers, said domestic factors tended to be the key driver for the housing market and the impact of Evergrande's collapse on local sentiment was not zero, but it was pretty close. He said the prospect of record low interest rates for even longer, could spur more activity in the market. There is now a record number of scheduled auctions and listings have surged again in Sydney and Melbourne. He suggested buyers were taking advantage of the window of opportunity before immigration picks up again. People are thinking they want to get something bought before 200,000 visa holders show up, he said. Well, yeah. What do you reckon, guys? Let's have a bit of a talk about this one. So a few different scenarios painted there. I don't think I would be as uh, doom and gloom and, and drastic as some of the scenarios that are put there. We've seen with the, you know other warnings of drastic impacts to our markets. Well, if China was buying up goods from other sectors, there were other markets that took up the difference. And even if they're trying to restructure their economy, there's still you know, other markets for our resources. So we'll have to see where it all goes. I think the biggest risk is housing interest rates staying lower and uh, immigration going up and then boop, housing prices. We'll have to see, guys. What do you reckon? Anyway, thanks for watching. Check out this video about the actual three red lines 
what it means, what the policy are, what the policy is, and why, well, so many of the uh, Chinese property developers aren't meeting it. Take care, guys. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.